everyone, welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The series may have finished, but as a special bonus, here are some of the rounds we didn't have time to fit into the original programmes, along with some of our favourite moments and a few outtakes. I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> there were protests around the world over an offensive cartoon about the Prophet Muhammad, originally printed in a Danish newspaper. In Beirut, the Danish embassy was set alight, and as the flames reached the kittens... Let's do that again. The flames did not reach the kittens. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing in this Danish everything? Meow! Meow! <laughs> the beautiful human interest story of just kittens pawing at the window. <laughs> but who shall save the kittens? I know, the Powerpuff Girls. All right. All right. There were protests around the world over an offensive cartoon about the Prophet Muhammad originally printed in a Danish newspaper. In Beirut, the Danish embassy was set alight and a... S ah, for <laughs> sakes. I <don't> <laughs> All I can see are their little faces. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't even say kittens, not even kittens at all. <laughs> OK, I belong here. I, do, I, I deserve to be here. Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. I'm a professional broadcaster, right? Yeah, yeah top with the kittens. <laughs> there were protests around the world over an offensive cartoon about Mohammed, originally printed in a Danish newspaper. In Beirut, the Danish embassy was set alight. As the flames reached the kitchens, several passing vegetarians suddenly thought, ooh, that's the one thing I miss most. <laughs> Yeah, do you know, the kitten stuff was better, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the first round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each chosen category, I read out an answer and each player has to guess what the question might be. Gina, which category would you like? <clears throat> I'm going to go for home news. OK, your category is home news. The answer is 77 billion. What could the question be? Um what will be the average London house price in 2008? <laughs> uh, how many sperm does it take to change a light bulb? Is it according to the Daily Mail how many asylum seekers are there in Britain? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is the number that Stephen Hawking can count up to before his battery runs out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it is something to do with the law. Something that's going to be against the law very soon. It's the Smoking. amount of cigarettes that get smoked in a year in Britain. Very good. Well done, Roy. Right. Right. <laughs> this refers to the smoking bill passed in the House of Commons this week, which will outlaw smoking in pubs, clubs and workplaces. But, I, I mean, the banned hunting, the banned smoking, if you're a beagle, you've got no pleasures left. <laughs> It's all come too late for Roy Castle, hasn't it? Roy Castle's going to be spinning in his grave now, trying to beat the world record for spinning in his grave, <laughs> currently held by O.J. Simpson's yeah. wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite brilliant. And it was yeah, three yeah. different jokes, That's one great. after the other. I think it's kind of ironic that you'd ban smoking in pubs in London when uh, it's kind of impossible to breathe outside a pub in London. <laughs> Children are chasing buses down the street, like nipping at the tailpipe, hoping <laughs> chunks of charcoal fresh air, you know. <laughs> so says the man from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> it's it has completely changed, because when I was a kid, you used to be able to buy um, not only normal cigarettes, but chocolate cigarettes. If you couldn't get normal, you, you were weaned onto cigarettes. <laughs> Buy chocolate cigarettes, and if you're in a media family, uh, presumably you had to snort lines of sherbet. Uh, <laughs> 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 that people drive cars, right? Yes. I'm guessing a car puts out more smoke than maybe a cigarette. It does, but that doesn't mean, yeah. I, you, I'm, you don't I, actually it, drive inside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't drink and drive, especially in the pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what shocking figure has smoking been held largely responsible for in parts of Glasgow? The shocking figure of Michelle McManus. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's the life expectancy of 54. It is just below 54 in parts of Glasgow. Yeah. The Carlton. And if you've ever been to the Carlton, you'll realise that's maybe a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's got a lower life expectancy than Iraq, and the really galling thing is that Iraqis also get to watch a better standard of football. <laughs> <laughs> The Guardian illustrated the story with this photo from a Glasgow pub of schoolboy Paul Macmillan. 
have, they, have they managed to get the moon inside the room? <laughs> This is, this is Glasgow's version of the Lord of the Rings. Hi, <laughs> 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 I'm a wee elf. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. <laughs> also, somebody ought to tell him that his shoulder's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, it's, all, it's all very well making jokes about this guy, but I'm going to be the one wandering around the streets of Glasgow <laughs> where he's sitting on the lookout for me <laughs> with his little hobbit friends. <laughs> There's the bloke next to him vaporised completely. <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines. Rory and Hugh, can you make your way to the Mock the Week press pit? In this round, one player takes the role of a person in the news giving a press conference, while the other says what they really mean. Rory, your England football manager, Sven Joran Eriksson, talking about recent events. Well, hello, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just had a meeting with the chief executive of the FA. Well, he said he was from the F.A. <laughs> <laughs> we reached a very amicable settlement. I'm rich! <laughs> <laughs> when I took on this job, uh, I knew exactly how much it involved. Four and a half million a year. <laughs> uh, we'll do well in the World Cup. We've got an excellent squad. Peter Crouch is world-class. <laughs> I would like to reassure you that my mind is very much on the job. Mmm. <laughs> nice tits. <laughs> Now we play a round called Stand Up Sit Down. It's for John, Joe, Andy and Frankie. This is a stand-up challenge based on this random news generator which contains four newsworthy topics. You spin the wheel and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. OK, here we go. OK, the subject is alternative energy sources. Who's going to come in? John. Despite what the government say, we do not need nuclear power in Britain. There are many great new alternative energies out there. Much of the Middle East is currently able to harness the power generated by hating America. <laughs> Every flat burnt there is now hooked up to an enormous generator which can power a fridge in Tehran for a week. And this is renewable energy, because America have pledged under Kyoto to produce a new flag for everyone burnt. So, <laughs> in winding the entire planet up, they are in fact pioneers in easing our reliance on fossil fuels. And we've got to do something. Britain is now so terrified of any rise in petrol prices that people in Britain have been seen at recent oil slicks wedging seagulls directly into their petrol <laughs> tanks, screaming, I've got to get to work, keep still and tuck your wings in. <laughs> well done, John. Please sit down. Right, let's spin the wheel again. OK, the subject is the unfit society. Who's going to come in? <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm one of those unfit people. I'm in my 40s, I've done no exercise since I was naught. <laughs> and, um, panicked recently, went to see my GP and said, look, what can I do so I don't die when I'm 50? And he said, well, exercise-wise, start slowly, do something two or three times a week that gets you slightly out of breath. So, um, started smoking again. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> sit down, very good. OK, Frankie and Andy, you're going to go head-to-head -head on this topic. Let's spin the wheel again. OK, so war on terror. Who wants to go first? Andy? Yes, uh, the war on terror. The Americans have said, uh, you know, they're, they're worried that uh, Iraq is their new Vietnam. Let's hope not. Otherwise, we're in for some shit movies in about ten years' time. <laughs> Good man, Andy. Well done. Andy Parsons there. <laughs> on the same topic, Frankie, it's your turn. 
Apparently, in America, they're building a big tower on the site of September the 11th, Freedom Tower, and they're looking at ways of trying to make it terrorist-proof. I think they should have just built a giant mosque. <laughs> no one's going to fly into that, are they? <laughs> or, or even better, a runway. <laughs> how, how galling would it be if you hijacked a plane and then had to come in and make a textbook landing? <laughs> They're always going, oh, don't deal with terrorists. We mustn't deal with terrorists. Let's deal with them. What's Al offering you boys? A hundred virgins? We'll give you 50 slags. <laughs> <laughs> or two women from Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> it is to do with the visitor to London. Oh, it's, it's, the whale. it's the whale. It's the whale, yes. Uh, the actual answer. I've no question. sympathy for this whale. It died of dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> In a river. They're supposed to be nearly as intelligent as man whales, <laughs> and this whale died of dehydration. Well, to be fair, the whale didn't request being removed from the river. Uh, <laughs> the whale probably, if asked, if consulted at any stage about <laughs> what are the major health problems that you could face while being removed from the river. <laughs> dehydration, he probably would... Thing about, the best thing about this whole whale business is that there's now no need to go to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Simply no need. You're 28 hours of connecting flights to look at whales. There's no point. They're in our river. <laughs> Do you know one of, the reason, one of the reasons I think it swam up the Thames was because the Navy were doing sonic uh, soundings and stuff off South End, and this apparently <laughs> confused the whale. Because it sounds like an explosion to us, but it, to the whale, it said diversion, naughty, close. <laughs> <laughs> Delays possible till November. I, <laughs> I, mean, I, <laughs> I was very impressed with the fact that I spoke to a number of people who said, well, it all it received all the coverage because we in Britain uh, love animals. Ugh. And you're kind of going, no, I think any country that had a whale swim into the middle of the capital city would have probably gone, oh, a whale, that's a little bit unusual uh, to us. <laughs> I don't think there's any country in the world that gone, oh, the bloody... Like an urban fox or something. I... The, bloody, <laughs> the bloody whales are at the bins again. <laughs> Jeez, uh... it, it was the same week, the whale came up the Thames, the same week as Ben Fogel and, what's it, <laughs> James Cracknell rode across the Atlantic. And the whale was probably thinking, look, if they're going to take my territory, <laughs> I'm going to London <laughs> and I'm going to present Cash in the Attic. <laughs> 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 this week on Cash in the Attic. <laughs> well, yes, it was my mother's originally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're hoping to raise money for a holiday in Australia. <laughs> I think it was weird that they were thinking. One of the plans was to use whale song to lure the whale back out to <laughs> sea. But we don't know what the whale song means. We have no idea. Any, any, no, anything by Dido will do. <laughs> As an emergency measure, they could have slowly moved Enya up the yeah. river from <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> playing her I think should do that anyway. driving the whale. Let's do that anyway as a memorial to the whale's memory, Dara. Or let's, let's make a memorial for the whale by putting it in the EastEnders title sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not very selective as well that they, they gave the whale a name? That it was called Wally or Whaley? What, is the, what was the mistake with the names? Well, because called... you would give it, you give a whale a name, but you don't. When a dingo has eaten some children in Australia, you don't say. <laughs> well, you don't. Davy to... the dingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, generally, you give the name to anthropomorphise to give to see that it reflects some great human qualities like bravery or getting lost. The whale. <laughs> yeah. But eating, <laughs> eating small children isn't really the kind of thing you want to have. <laughs> oh, little Teddy the dingo, you're all full of <laughs> now, aren't you? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the, the, uh, the Sunday Times helpfully uh, ran a map of the whale's route, which we can show here. That's the whale, which is, you know, the river, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're going, ah, yeah, no, if I was going to Battersea for me, something, I wouldn't have gone that way. Yeah. <laughs> After the whale sadly died, some criticised the rescue operation. Let's face it, a whale needs to be winched onto the barge like it needs a hole in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was sweet, that particular one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
To be fair, the whale only received the same treatment as any NHS patient, dying on the mm. trolley 36 hours after first being seen. <laughs> The next dilemma is how to dispose of the body. The search is on for a toilet big enough to flush it down. <laughs> so, I couldn't do that. That's a... <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We'll play in a recent piece of news footage featuring some of the world's major figures and ask Rory to voice the characters. Uh, this week, Rory, you'll be Tony Blair and Gordon Brown making a recent announcement. Uh, right, uh, I'm running the country, he's not. Uh, just, uh, little word. I think it's important that you understand that these are the real decisions that affect the future of the country. Uh, uh, should I have curry or an Indian? Or, no, maybe, maybe Italian. Italian, that would be nice. Or no, maybe Chinese. All right, and I, I think you know, these are the important things, the things we all come together and, and decide, you know, they're going to determine exactly what's going to happen in, in the future. And those decisions... Uh, pink for the upstairs bedroom. Uh, <laughs> For the downstairs, to, and, and that's what I'm saying to you simply here. And you know, we've all gathered here, we've got a number of uh, people. There's a man there who I think his hair was black when we started. <laughs> but uh, look, look, look uh, I agree with everything he says, not because I actually agree, but because it's a better chance of me taking over uh, when, when he's actually uh, finished. Yeah, hey, you believe that, you believe anything? Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, you got your head the wrong way around. Uh, oh. <laughs> I love the Smurfs, yeah, great. Okay. Uh, no, 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 the original, the, the, he, say, he said three months. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, we, we fell out about that. About that. Uh, but I, I think you will be out quite soon. I, I, I honestly do. Uh, I, I'm sorry, you know, I said I'll move when the house is ready. The trouble is I gave the contract <laughs> to Multiplex, right? OK, so it could be another 18 months. Uh, uh, these two Muslims walk in a bar, OK? <laughs> Thank you. Can you please make your way to the performance area so we can see your dating video? Hello. I'm looking for a woman with massive tits. <laughs> so that she won't be intimidated by mine. <laughs> I'm looking for a lady who can share the good times and the council tax. <laughs> I've taken a lot of care with my appearance. I've taken care to appear like a cartoon dog who's accidentally swallowed a pickle. <laughs> I've always wanted to have sex in a car, and I've got two, so I reckon if we park them side by side and take the doors off, I could just about manage it. <laughs> so, get in touch if you fancy friendship or something more, by which I mean intercourse. <laughs> Would anyone like to uh, give us a guess there? Well, I think we, we think it was John Prescott. Yeah, yes, and then we think that too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> John Prescott, if I can come back here, well done. <laughs> yes, that was, of course, Lonely Heart John Prescott, who performed a spectacular U turn this week when he decided to throw his weight behind the government's education reforms after publicly criticising them. What was John Prescott up to last week in this photo? Oh. <laughs> this was when he'd just fallen through a stargate. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, he'd been doing some policy measures in ancient Egypt and then woof! <laughs> one of them leaped straight into a kid's 100 metres final. How far into the 100 metres final is he there? A yard, I think. Essentially, it? yeah. He is actually, yeah, he's just taken off. Is it not a mark of some stupidity that he seems to be kind of reaching for the line with 99 metres to go? <laughs> 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 the press got dip. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, about, about three yards later, this is what he looked like. Uh, he put. <laughs> to be fair to him, he pulled a muscle. Right? He hadn't. He hasn't sufficiently warmed up. He seems to become an exercise mistake. He, he seems to have become an awful lot shorter as well. <laughs> he looks like he's offering an unusual service to one of his yeah. juniors. <laughs> Why does he do? Why did he do it though? I mean, why do politicians do these stupid, humiliating things? Because he, he's supposed to be busy. I mean, we all know <laughs> he's you know, an embarrassment. The government, you know, are looking for a place to bury him. But nominally, he's the deputy prime minister, and he turns up at a school and what joins in with a race. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's depicting himself as a moron. <laughs> Maybe he is a moron, but there should at least be a team of people round him trying to stop him looking quite the moron he clearly is. <laughs> yeah, 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 clearly, there are three advisers there. Going, we, yeah, uh, going, what the hell? You, you joined in with the race, you wanker. <laughs> <laughs> They're children. You were wearing your coat. Of course, you pulled a muscle, <laughs> you fat git. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just... 
Our next round is bombshell phone calls. Here, two players take on the identity of famous figures who are on the phone to one another. Frankie or Tony Blair calling American President George W. Bush, who will be played by Rory. Hello, George. Pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that ringing sound? <laughs> Mr. President, it's the telephone. OK. Hi, who's that? This is Tony. Tony, hi, haven't heard from you in a while. Didn't we speak yesterday? <laughs> oh, that Tony, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just one second, I'm gonna put you on, I'm gonna put you on hold. Do we know this guy? He's, <laughs> he's from Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Are they for us or against us? I think we're not currently fighting them, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Tony, your call is important to us. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I, I hear you've been having some trouble with Dick Cheney. Mr. Cheney's an upright guy. He's uh, an outstanding citizen. And I uh, just want to say he's a uh, great deputy prime minister. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, <laughs> vice president, sir. He's vice president. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you, every world leader could do with a dick as their, <laughs> as their deputy. Well, I've certainly got one. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me you're going to stand down soon. So, uh, tell me about Gordon. Can we trust him? I'm sure we can. Arrange a meeting with Gordon and the Lizard... Uh, I can't speak either. <laughs> Arrange a meeting with Gordon and the Lizard Masters. I'm sorry, did you say Lizard Masters? <laughs> <laughs> Can we... I have to say, George, this impression is uncanny. I'm driving you mad. The question was, what state was the Thames whale said to be in? Sorry, I'll do that again, because I keep saying Thames Middle because I'm Irish. I think that was absolutely fine, Dara. I wouldn't worry about doing that again. That bit. OK, fine. <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, just to check, sorry, it is... It's, Thames. That's Thames. Right. Thames. It's, it's the River Thames. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK, all right. Um, <laughs> what state was the famous... Uh, <laughs> the famous Qual uh, said to be in no, you're being when silly. it arrived in London? Yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah, I, I will do it properly, all right? Uh, <laughs> the question is, what state was the Thames... <laughs> <laughs> That's the record now. You've hit the Thames barrier, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> the question is, what state was the Thames whale said to be in when it arrived in Loondone? <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, Jesse, come on, Jesse. Let's do it again. Does anyone know just the amount of shouting there is in my earpiece going, could we please move <laughs> on? Uh, <laughs> could we? Is there any chance we could not do the entire recording about how Goring killed himself by first extracting a cyanide tablet from his own feces? Is there any chance, Dara, you could keep some control over the show so it's broadcastable at some stage? Could you? Could you? Could... They're, they're even shouting at this bit. Stop doing the bit where you mock us for shouting in their ear. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK. Here we go. The first subject is... Cliffhanger lines from a political soap opera. <laughs> I'm John F. Kennedy. I've been in the shower. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Condoleezza. I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> The irony won't be lost on you here, President Schwarzenegger. I'm from the future, and I'm here to stop you from destroying the world. <laughs> we've had drunkards, we've had rent boys. What could be worse? What have you done? Shagged a goat addicted to heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I missed your vote on sustainable agriculture. I'm afraid I was busy sleeping with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to seduce me, Lady Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say, George? Just you and me and Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> oh. 
The next topic is words you'd never hear from a newsreader. Welcome to Channel 5 News, Thekos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, do you want to buy some speakers? <laughs> Too revolting to describe. But let's have a go anyway. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the two youths convicted this morning got what they f deserved. <laughs> okay, they may have acquitted him, but he certainly looked like a paedophile. <laughs> You've been watching Sky News. To be honest, I'd double-check everything you've just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Gary Glitter received his honour at the Palace this morning. <laughs> Welcome to ITV News on ice. <laughs> Must be unlikely. <laughs> the next report may contain images that could give you the horn. <laughs> In this next report, Jerry Adams is voiced by an actor, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I'll tell you about the priest process, mother. <laughs> okay, next topic is bad things to say at Prime Minister's question time. Prime Minister, could you look interested while I bring up some boring shit about my constituency? <laughs> Is this going to take long? Cos I've got an appointment with a rent boy in half an hour. <laughs> Can I ask the Prime Minister, are you paying too much for car insurance? <laughs> <clears throat> we've got one, we've got two, we've got two more poofs than you. <laughs> uh, could, could I ask the Prime Minister, when are you going to retire, you bastard? <laughs> Prime Minister, my first is in P, but not in canoe. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things for a TV announcer to say. For those of you of a nervous disposition, you may be disturbed to know that your television is off and I'm speaking to you from inside your own head. <laughs> You're watching ITV One. Uh, why are you doing that? I've got the, <laughs> I've got the listings in front of me, and we've got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Well, that's it. Don't forget that BBC Twenty Four goes through the night, as do I. <laughs> <laughs> and next on Channel Five, a sensitive documentary um, entitled "The Boy Who Looked Like a Baboon's Ass." <laughs> You may be interested to know I am completely naked and playing with myself. <laughs> we interrupt tonight's showing of The Sixth Sense with some breaking news. Bruce Willis is a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> if you have been affected by any of the issues raised in Balamori... <laughs> Tonight's episode of Songs of Praise contains strong language and scenes of a sexual nature. <laughs> Let's leave it there.